Hello and welcome to my multicolored Bloomboro Limited set review. I'm going to be going over all the, all the multicolored cards today. Uh, there's considerably fewer of them in the set than you know the last couple, so it's actually going to be interesting to sort of see how that changes things. There's more cards of each color and fewer multicolored cards in this format, so kind of interesting. Just kind of an interesting little dynamic shift. We're going. Bloomboro is a more traditional set in that sense. No bonus sheet. No not no nonsense. There's no nonsense going on here. As far as I know, maybe I'm just like haven't read that there's a bonus sheet and I just like forgot. Usually, I, like by now, I would have heard if there was one. And uh, yeah, I don't know. There probably isn't. And then if there is, I'm just gonna look like an idiot. So that's fine. I'm okay with looking like an idiot. Either way, not what this is about today. Today we're gonna be talking about the multicolor cards and how good I think they're going to be in limited. If you haven't been here before, these are the tiers I use. There's five of them. Tier one's good. Tier five is bad. This is kind of what they're supposed to mean. Feel free to pause and read read that, but um, I'm just going to get right into it, start rating cards, all that good stuff. And I'm, you know, I've been known to change my ratings throughout the, uh, throughout the day, or for throughout the course of the presentation here. Alana Divergent Storm, three blue red for a three five, when you cast a spell, if it's the first instant or sor instant, if it's the first instant spell, the first sorcery spell, or the first otter spell, other than this, you cast each this turn. You may have target opponent draw a card. If you do copy that spell, you may choose new targets for the copy. <sighs> so, ha having your opponent draw a card to copy your spell is probably good when you want it to happen. The problem is that this is just a 5-mana 3-5. With no other text on it. Um... And also, you are giving your opponent a whole card to make up for the card that you were getting. So you're not getting a you're getting a tempo advantage to give them a card advantage, which sometimes is worth it and sometimes isn't. But I these type of effects, I don't know. I, I just don't think this is going to be where you want to be at. Especially like, do you really want a five minute creature in your blue red spells deck? Is that really what you want? Like, is that the thing? Like, this is how you're doing it? Now, cop again, copying your spells is powerful. That's why this isn't a tier 5 card. I don't think it's completely unplayable. It does have power and toughness and can attack and block. Um, so those are things that it does. Maybe I'm underrating the ability to copy something. I just think that giving your opponent a whole card to do so seems largely not uh, what I would want to be doing. Just, just in general, largely what I wouldn't want, something I wouldn't want to do. So I, I'm, I'm not super excited about this. Balin the Haymaker. Uh, red, green, white for a 4-3. Tap two untapped tokens you control, add one in mana of any color. Tap three untapped tokens you control, draw a card. Tap four untapped tokens you control, put three counters on this, it gains trample until end of turn. So obviously this card is a powerful card when it's on the battlefield. The primary problem, of course, is that it is a three-color card that wants to do things with, like, a bunch of tokens. Like, it's in the right three colors, but the reason I've graded this so low is that it's three colors and it's three mana. Um, it's just hard to it's just hard to do that, and you need a lot of tokens. Like, you need, like, two tokens to add one mana of any color is fine, but not amazing. And then three tokens to draw a card, now we're kind of getting somewhere. And then four tokens to do the, the thing that, like, attacks. That's really good. But that's a lot of tokens to have on the board at the same time. And your opponent can just kill this. It has three toughness. These abilities can be activated at instant speed, so there is that. That is a nice upside, whatever. Um, that's cool. Okay, great. Um, but yeah, it's to me, this just seems like three-color card. Going to be tough to cast. Probably not really worth it. Maybe I'm a little too low. It is have it does have d decent like power and toughness. It just kind of seems like it enters the battlefield, doesn't do anything really by itself, needs a bunch of help, and is powerful in the right situation, but just seems really situational to me. Burrow Guard Mentor, green white for a star star with trample. Its power and toughness are each equal to the number of creatures you control. So obviously, it starts off as a one one. Now I'm really high on this card for a lot of reasons. Normally these types of cards are not very good, and I'm very out on them. The creatures that are equal to the number of power and toughness equal to the number of other creatures you control or whatever, or just creatures you control, type cards, um, tend to be pretty bad, um, or had been pretty bad for a very long time until Regal Bunnycorn. Um, which I actually, again, this card I have created in the same tier as Regal Bunnycorn. I had Regal Bunnycorn as a tier 2 card, I believe. 
when I did the Wilds of Eldraine, you can go verify that. I'm not going to bother. But this is a better Regal Bunnycorn in most scenarios because it has Trample. Um, Trample is a good ability. This set is more token-focused than Wilds of Eldraine was. So, yeah. I think Bunnycorn also counted in enchantments, I forget. But it, whatever. Primarily, it was going to be focused around creatures. There's lots of ways to make many creatures in this set. Um, this is a really good 2-drop. It's going to take over the game if it's unanswered. Yes, it doesn't block very well on turn 2. That's okay. On turn 4, you're almost certainly making two bodies due to the offspring cards. And on turn 3, you can make two multiple bodies um, frequently. So, this is just going to be a really solid 2-drop in your green-white decks. Camellia, the Seed Miser. One black green for a 3-3 Menace. Other squirrels you control have Menace. When you sacrifice one or more foods, create a squirrel token, a 1-1 one, one squirrel token. And you can pay two and forage to put a plus and plus one counter on each other squirrel you control. So to me, this just seems, like, really good. Obviously, it's just a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three Menace by itself. But there's so many forage things, and forage just seems so good, especially in green. Like, all the green cards are just, like... For it, like all the green forage cards have looked really strong to me, so I just think this is really well positioned. Um, that's why I have it in tier one instead of tier two. I think if that deck doesn't work or isn't the best deck or whatever, um, this card will get worse, and obviously then it won't be tier one, and that's fine, and I'm okay with that be being wrong in that way. Um, this is just a very powerful card. Uh, it makes all your like there's a lot of squirrels. Making them hell have menace is good. Three mana three three menace is a tier three card by itself, close to tier two, but probably in the tier three spectrum of things. If you just had a vanilla three three, this just does so much more than that. Um, the fact that there are ways to sacrifice foods is really good. I yeah, yeah. So I, I just I just think this is going to get there and be a really strong card and reason to play black green. Cindering Cutthroat, 2 and a black-red hybrid for a 3-2. It enters with a plus-1, one, plus-1 one counter on it. Um, if an opponent lost life this turn, it has 1 and a Rakdos hybrid to gain menace until end of turn. So, 3-mana, three 3-2, three not good. So, what is what is a 3-mana, 4-3? Three? Not, like, not that much better? Like, even if you do the thing with this, is it good? And the answer is, eh. Like, it would be like a tier 3 card, Okay. If this card was just a 4-3 and had the abil the second ability, it would be like a tier 3 card, maybe. It, maybe, it still maybe wouldn't be. Um, but this is kind of like the poster child for why I think the red-black deck is not going to be functional. It's just that this card is not... Like, it just doesn't work. Like, it doesn't it doesn't do anything. It's just a like a creature with stats and, like, doesn't really, like, contribute to doing anything positive. Tier 4 might even be generous, to be honest with you. Corpsberry Cultivator... One and two uh, Golgari hybrids for a two three. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may forage, and when you forage, put a plus one plus one counter on it. So, generally, these type of cards are very bad. Now, I just said that I really liked the forage deck, and I haven't actually reevaluated this card since going over, like, doing my green and black set reviews. And I do think that it, it could be bumped up just because I think that deck's going to be good, um, just based on, like, how good the forage stuff is. Aside from this card, which I don't think is especially great. You don't really want to just be, like, foraging just to do this. This is not... This isn't like the 2-2 um, the in MKM where you could investigate to make a clue token. Like, and you would just do that just to make a clue token. Getting one plus one plus one counter on your 3-drop is not really worth spending the resources to forage to do this. Because this is one of the very, very few payoffs that... I know we just saw the rare that does it, but, like, there's not a ton of payoffs that are, like, when you forage, do this. It's a lot of forage, and then you get a thing as a result of foraging, like, on the card itself. So this type of thing of, like, oh, I'm gonna forage with this thing and get repeatable foraging isn't really what you're trying to do for the most part, and also you just are gonna run yourself out of resources for when you have forage cards that you actually care about. Um, yes, you can make this as a 3-mana 3-4 uh, on turn 3. That's okay. I just, again, I think that you're... This is not a high-priority card. This just seems really low-priority. Um, I think there's better ways to spend your foraging resources, and I think there's better creatures. So I'm gonna keep, I'm actually going to keep this in Tier 4, I think, and maybe it's a bit of a hot take. Maybe it's a bit of a, like, bold, like, ooh, I think this deck's going to be good, but I think this card is not the reason why this deck's going to be good. 
I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a hot take guy, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give a little bit of a hot take, and that's, that's where I'm at. D Dream Drew Entrancer. Two green blue for a 3 4 reach. When it enters, tap up to one target creature and put three stun counters on it. If you control that creature, draw two cards. Really interesting design. So, you can essentially, like, sacrifice a creature to draw two cards. Now, obviously, it's better than sacrificing a creature because you do get to keep the actual creature around. Eventually, you get it back. Three stun counters, a lot of stun counters. Which is why, you know, you can play this as a 4 minute 3 4, tap something down, put three stun counters on it. That's a good card, too. Um, and the versatility here, I think, it, it makes it close to tier one, right? Like, it makes it close to tier one um, just because like, you could be like, all right, well, I'm I'm the beatdown, so I'm going to be tapping down their thing, and then they, you know, whatever, or you need to play defense. This just this is just very versatile um, and does a lot of stuff, and I think it's good. Um, the main reason I don't have it in tier one is that I don't, I have no belief that this deck is actually going to be functional. Like the green-blue deck, I don't think it's going to be functional. But I, if it's functional, this is a card that's going to be good and have a, and win a considerable amount because it will make you want to draft that deck and it will be good in that deck. Phineas Ace Archer. Green, white for a 2 2 Vigilance Reach. When it attacks, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each other creature you control, that's a token or a rabbit. Um, then, if creatures you control have a total power of 10 or greater, you draw a card. So, 2 mana 2 2 Vigilance. So, if you just think about it by itself, 2 mana 2 2 Vigilance Reach, what is that? That's like a tier 4 card. Maybe tier three. I don't know. It's somewhere between. It's somewhere around tier three, tier four. Probably tier three. It's pretty close to average. Maybe above average. But I think it's closer to just bang on average. So, it's maybe not going to be the easiest thing in the world for this to attack because it's just a two mana two two vigilance. Um, and the reach is like really weird and doesn't do anything. So there's that. But it is really strong. Like. There are going to be games where you play this. It's a very threatening two drop where you play it on turn two and your opponent's like, man, I really have to answer that or play something that blocks it because otherwise I'm just going to die because they're just going to play any three drop at all in any in either of these colors. And basically every single one of them is either a rabbit or a token. So, and God forbid you make the two, three one ones and get to attack with this and then you give three two twos. Like, that's a disaster. Um. So, yeah, it it's very good when it works. I'm not putting it in tier one because it doesn't just work every single time. Like, it doesn't just come onto the battlefield and just work. You know what I mean? It's not, this isn't Sephiroth Steed, where it just, you play it on turn four, you start making angels on turn, you know, turn two, you start making angels on turn three sometimes. This card's not making angels on turn three. Um, so I'm going to keep it in tier two, and maybe I'm going to get punished. Maybe I'm going to see this, and it's going to be one of the best cards in the set, and I'm going to be wrong about it. And that's okay. I still think it's good. I just think that it's not busted. Fireglass Mentor. Black red for a 2-1. At the beginning of your second main phase, if an opponent lost life this turn, exile the top two cards of your library. Choose one of them until the end of turn, and you play that card. So... Uh, there's not really a lot to like about this card, like, honestly. So the stats are terrible. Two mana for a two one is just a disaster, especially as your signpost uncommon. Like you really would like to be getting a little bit better rate on that, um, and the effect isn't really good either. Mostly because the like your opponent has to lose life on your turn thing doesn't really work. This would maybe have worked if like OTJ where you had the crime lands. So like this this does not type of like they have tried this thing where it's like oh your opponent loses life and then you get an advantage. Like, that style of um, deck, or an archetype, they've tried it many times. The one set that they did not try it in, OTJ, it may actually have had a chance because of the Crime Lands. They are, there are not Crime Lands in this set, so it is just good. Like, it all, this deck just has so many problems of, like, well, my opponent played a 3-3, and I couldn't attack into it, so I couldn't deal damage to them, and they didn't lose life, and my deck didn't work anymore, and I lost. So... Like that's that happens so often with this with these style of decks, and they just are never good. So I I'm really gonna need to see it to believe it on this one. Obviously, this one like looks like it draws cards, but does it ever actually draw cards? And like the the problem is like you play like your removal spell to get through to deal damage to them, and then you don't have any mana left to actually cast anything in your second main phase. So it's like, like did you did you draw a card? Uh, maybe you you might have drawn a land, maybe. And it, it, lands are good. Lands are cards. They're cards. They help you cast your spells. But like sometimes, you know, sometimes we look for more. Give scaled sorch, scorch. 
Didn't pronounce that one right. Black Red for 3-2. Word pay 2 life. Other creatures you control enter with an additional plus 1 plus 1 counter on them for each opponent who has lost life this turn. Whenever you cast a lizard spell, it deals 1 damage to target opponent. So, 2 minute 3-2. Ward pay 2 life. Fine. Um, if you connect, you make your other creatures bigger. Pretty good. Again, it has the same problems as the last card, where like it needs your opponent to lose life to work. Um, but... This is a 3-2 instead of a 2-1, so it's getting a full two tiers up, and if your opponent wants to kill it, they do have to pay two life, so... Uh, very good, but I don't think busted, because again, the, the archetype just... Like, this style of card just has foundational flaws that you can't... Like, you... You can fix them, but fixing them just makes the card busted, so they didn't make the card completely busted, so it's not... They didn't fix the foundational flaws. Glarb Calamity's Augur... Black, green, blue for a 2-4 death touch. You may look at the top card of your library any time. You may play lands and cast spells with mana value 4 or greater from the top of your library, and you can tap it to surveil 2. So 3 mana 2-4 death touch is pretty big. Like, that's a big card. Now, obviously, it's triple, It's like 3 colors, so it's not really 3 mana. It's like 4 or 5 mana, but it's not like... It's semantics. Um, playing lands from the top of your library is very good, especially on a card like this that's three colors, because a lot of times you're going to be able to play it, like you play, let's say you, you play your fixing tap land on turn three to get your third color of mana to, to play this. Then on turn four, you can play this if you have a land on top, then you can play the land, right? Like that's, that's kind of a thing that can happen somewhat frequently with this style of card, is that you don't necessarily get to play it on turn three, but that means that you can hit a land right immediately and you kind of get a little bit of extra, you know, value there. So that's good. Um, the, the mana value 4 or greater, like, you're going to have some number of spells mana value 4 or greater in your deck, probably, like, 6 or 7, something like that, somewhere in that neighborhood that's, you know, like, 1 eighth of your deck or something like that, I don't know. So you're, like, you're you're approximately, like, 50%, uh, for, let's say you're 40% to hit, eh. So you're 45% to hit a land on the top of your deck. And if you have six spells, you're like about one in seven. So you're like, yeah, I mean, you're probably over 50% to hit something actually relevant that you can actually cast. And you can surveil, obviously, to make that even more likely. So you're, you're probably close to like 70% with the surveil to be able to cast something on the top of your deck every any, any given turn. Um... And the surveil allows you to stack, so you can actually get multiples. So this card can pop off pretty hard, is what I'm saying. Um, the reason it's not tier one is that it's three colors, so that's the reason. But it's a good card. It's a, obviously a good card. It, you know, Death Touch is nice. It has four toughness. That's, there's a lot to like. I have rated it the same as this card. Head of the Homestead, three and two green white hybrids for a three two. When it enters, you create two one one right rabbit creature tokens. Now this card, if you think about it on its face, it is a five mana for a 5-4, right? Uh, worth of stats, right? Now, it's spread across three bodies. Now, three is a lot of a lot of bodies to be having. And green-white, and specifically either green or white, or specifically green-white, is really cares about going wide and rabbits. I should probably bump this down to tier three, because, like, it is it is a five-drop. Like, it is a five-drop, and you can have too many of them. I just kind of want to make a bet that this card's going to be really good, and the archetype's going to be really good, and I kind of want to put it in tier two and just say... Yeah, I mean, this thing makes tons of stats, and makes to makes two tokens, and it's a 3-2, and it's a rabbit, and it, it's just it's just kind of all of the stuff that you want, and I really like it. And I kind of want to make a stand that's like, hey, I really like this card, I really think it's good, I think it's going to do a lot for these decks. The problem is, am I realistically going to take this over a 2-drop ever? A good one, no, a bad one, maybe. So that's where I'm kind of like, should I move this into tier three? Because that's like actually a realistic place to put it. Probably it is again like five drops. You, to, to be a tier two five drop, you gotta you really gotta bring the heat, and I think this almost does. And that's why I, my initial sort of feeling was like tier two. Like when I see this card, I'm like, man, this really is doing all the stuff. Like it's it's triggering all the the the, the things in my brain that make me go. Excited. Like, I'm like, oh man, it's doing all this stuff. And you know what? I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to leave it here. I think it's going to be nuts. Um, partially because, again, I think these are the two best colors, so I expect this card that's in the two best colors to perform well. Helga Skittish Seer. 
The green, white, blue for a 1-3. When you cast a creature spell with mana value 4 or later, you draw a card, gain 1 life, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on this creature. You can tap to add X mana of any one color where X is this card's power. Spend that mana only to cast creature spells with mana value 4 or greater or spells with X in their mana costs. So yeah, this is fine. Again, suffers from the hard to play with, hard to play, hard to cast problem. I do think it's worse than the card, the other three color card we've seen, or some the, the last one we saw, because it requires some hoops, right? Like, it is a mana elf, it's a mana dork itself, but um, it does need some help, and it kind of just dies. Like, it's it's below rate, basically. It's a three mana one three that you can't really cast on a curve very often, so that 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 scares me. It is again when when it sticks and it survives, it is strong because you can get you can start drawing cards, gaining life, putting counters on this, and then you're just going to town. Then you're just doing it, you know. But it does have to survive, and for that reason, I have I have basically downgraded it a tier. Hugs Grizzly Guardian. X red red green green for a five five trample. When it enters exile the top X cards of your library until the end of your next turn, you may play those cards. You may play an additional land on each of your turns. So. The reason this is not tier one is again the mana cost. So they taught so Wizards has talked about wanting to make rares less splashable. And I think we're finally seeing some of that. We saw we've seen a little bit within MKM and OTJ, but in this set, there's just been like like this is a prime example of that card. Like this, you can't play this in any deck that's not red green. Like you just have to play this in red green. It's a good card in that deck. The mana cost is really prohibitive. It's a five it's a four mana five five trample. Um but, like, it, you know, the mana cost is what is preventing it from being tier 1, basically. If this, if this was, if this just cost X, 2X red green, I would put it in tier 1. It does not cost that, so it is in tier 2. Junk Blade Bruiser. 3 and 2 red green hybrids for a 4-5 trample. When you expend 4, it gets plus 2, plus 1 until end of turn. Very vanilla creature. I just, there's just so much, you can just do more. Like, there's just, there's just better stuff to do. Like, when you compare this to the rabbit, right? Now, you might say, same stats. And that's true. It is the same stats. The problem is that the rabbit is doing so much more than this is doing. It's making two additional bodies, and it's making three rabbits, which are, you know, a creature type that is significant. And two tokens, which is a, a mechanic that's more significant than expending four. And this doesn't do anything. When it expends four when it ETBs, but that's not. Like, anything that costs four expends four. So that doesn't... It doesn't actually helping you do that. It just kind of is a thing that does that. It's like you, you can play any five drop, you know. Um, so I do think that it's this card is just not. You can play it. It's not like unplayably bad. I just don't think it's necessary in any deck. Castrol the Wind Crested three white blue for a four five flyer. When one or more birds you control deal combat damage to a player, choose one. Put a bird creature card from your grave, hand or graveyard onto the battlefield with a finality counter on it. Put a plus one plus one counter on each bird you control, or you can draw a card. So, turn five, you can play this, attack with one of your birds, hit your opponent, do one of these things. Great, you did the thing, and you're probably winning. So, I I I was back and forth between tier two and tier one with this card. Because... I just... Like... It needs help. Like, it... it needs help to do the thing like it doesn't just come into play and just do the thing now it does work with itself right so if it gets to attack on your next turn i should i should just move it up i don't know it's a good card obviously it's a good card i'm not saying it's not a good card it's busted when it actually works the question is will it work a high enough percentage of the time and like okay so what does the average case look like? You play this on five. Let's say you have a bird, which you probably will. But the problem, the thing with this deck is that it kind of wants you to have birds and not birds. Like it wants you to have flyers and non-flyers. And it's like, I don't know. I, I think you're gonna have a bird on turn four, five attacking. You you probably can if you are trying to play around this thing. And then it attacks. It hits with your opponent. And then. The best mode is probably put something on the, your, from your hand or your graveyard onto the battlefield with a finality counter on it. In most cases, that's probably the best mode. Maybe not. Maybe you just want to draw a card. Maybe you just want to put a plus one plus one counter on each bird you control. Yeah, I don't know. It seems it seems really good. It seems like it's a really good card. Just by itself, it does all this stuff when it attacks. 
Like, if your opponent doesn't have a removal spell, they're probably go like they're definitely going to lose because this isn't just going to hit them every turn, and it's a five mana, four five flyer. The problem for me is like, if they have a removal spell, it basically doesn't do anything. So, I don't know. You know, I, I'm 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 going to give it. I'm going to move it up. I'm going to optimistically move it up. I'm going to stop being a pessimist and move it up to tier one. But let it be known that I'm not happy about it. I have moved the bird up to tier 1. I have done it. It is. I, I have put a bird in tier 1. The eagle has landed. Lily Splash Mentor. 2 green-blue for a 4-4 four, four reach. You can pay 1 and green-blue to exile another target creature you control and return to the battlefield under its owner's control with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, and you can activate only as a sorcery. Um, yeah. I have this in tier 2. Again, that's assuming this archetype works. If it doesn't work, obviously it's unplayable because the archetype won't work. But I think, you know... 4 mana 4-4 four, four reach is a tier 3 card. Having the extra ability is really nice because you are theoretically going to have things you want to blink because that's what the deck is about is blinking things even though there's not that many good things to blink in the set. There's some, and we'll get to one a little bit later. But, um, yeah, I think this is just a good card on its face and you'll play it. Any blue-green deck, you would play this. And, yeah, it does the thing. Mabel Air to Crag Flame. One red, white for a 3 3. Other mice you control get plus one, plus one. When it enters, create Crag Flame, a legendary colorless equipment artifact token with equipped creature gets plus one, plus one. It has vigilance, trample, and haste, and you equip for two. So obviously, this is just a great card. It's a three mana lord. Those are decent. Um, three mana, three, three lord. Good. It's good stats. Allows your two drops to attack. Good. Great. Um, makes a, equipment that is not like you wouldn't probably play that equipment by itself. Uh, it depends on how much it costs up front, but it is good when it's for free. So <laughs> it's good when it's free, and for that reason, I'm putting it into tier one. It's just, it's just, it's just does it's kind of it kind of is the, the arch archetypical card of like, yep, does this good thing? Does this like, does it take the box of has immediate board impact? Yes. Does it take the box of decent rate up front? Yes. Does it make two permanents when it comes into the battlefield? Yes. Those are kind of like your three boxes to check to really be a tier one card. This does all of those things. I'm going to put it in Tier 1. Mind Drill Assistant. Assailant. Oh, man. Not one of those. One, two, and two blue-black hybrids for 2-5 with Threshold. It has plus 3, plus 0, as long as there are seven or more cards in your graveyard. And it has two and a blue-black hybrid is a real one. So originally I was lower on this because it's like, man, it's a 4-mana 2-5. But I think Threshold's going to be pretty doable, actually. Um... Especially in blue black, like they they seem to have put enough. Especially like the black cards, there's a lot of black cards that just like mill two, surveil two, all that stuff. And so, and on turn four, this doesn't have to be a five five. It's obviously great if it's a five five, but you can just play this, and it just becomes a threat in a couple of turns, and you're gonna be happy with that. Um, so, I think I think threshold is doable, and because I think threshold is doable, I think this card is going to be playable. Not great, but playable. Moonrise Cleric. One and two black-white hybrids for a 2-3 flyer. When it attacks, you gain one life. So, 3-mana 2-3 flyer, not very good. Tier 4, probably by itself. We've kind of seen this. Uh, hasn't been very good. When it attacks, you gain one life. Sure, like that's a thing you want in black-white. It's a bat. You know, whatever. I, I think this is an enabler. Like, if, if you want the thing that this is trying to do, it's going to be okay, but I, I don't think it's anything special. Mura Trash Tactician. One red green for a 2 4 at the beginning of your first main phase. You add red or green for each raccoon you control, including this one. When you expend 4, you gain 3 life. When you expend 8, you exile the top 2 cards of your library until the end of your next turn. You may play those cards. Um, yeah, I mean, this is a good value generator. It generates mana as well, um, so that's nice. I, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's solid. Like, it does, it does nothing when it ETBs. It's 3 mana, 2, 4. But on your next turn, it's going to add some mana, and that's good, and your opponent has to kill it, and that's good, and whatever. But, like, yeah. Um, obviously it could, in theory, um, like, you know. I don't know. <laughs> Unless you're, like, doing something crazy, it's just going to be 
Like, there's not, like, you get, obviously, it gets you for raccoons. So, like, it's the raccoon, but, like, there's, there's other raccoons that are around. They exist. So, like, you, you could, I could see yourself adding two mana, three mana sometimes. If it lives. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's good. It's a good card. Plume Creed Mentor. One white blue for a 2 3 flyer. When it or another creature you control with flying enters, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control without flying. So obviously this is very powerful. If it just let you put the counter wherever you wanted, it would be sick. Um, it's close to tier one, obviously. It is. It's, it's very close to tier one. I thought about putting it there. Um, it's a very good card. For three mana, you're getting a lot of stats. Um, the the, the deck-building restriction makes it kind of tough in some ways. Because I think like this card gets better the more non-flying creatures you have. But it also gets better, better the more flying creatures you have. So it's it's kind of, you know, it it's got this weird balance where it's like you want to have at least one non-flying creature in play, so this thing triggers once. But you also want to have a bunch of flyers because you want this to trigger multiple times. Um, and it's really sick. Like this is a sick card. Like it's really really good. My concern is the deck building restriction. My concern is also that this is the only good card in the deck. Um, and like, if this is the reason, like this, this, this is definitely a good reason to draft blue white. If this is like the only reason to draft blue white, it's kind of concerning. So I, we'll see. I do think this is going to be good, no matter what happens. The question is, is it good enough to be tier one by itself? You know, and I think it's it's it's. I think I'm leaning in that direction. I think. You know, if you ask me in another you know, day, like t between today and tomorrow, could I change my mind to be like, yeah, this is actually tier one. I don't know. It, it's it's really on the borderline there um, for me. Pond Profit. Blue, two blue-green hybrids for a 1-1 one, one when it enters, draw a card. So this is your best blank target in the frog deck. This is this is the thing. Now you, you basically only want to play this in blue-green because double-pipped of either of these colors isn't good, like it. Green, green for a 1-1 one, one enter TB draw card. Not a good card. Similarly, with blue, not a good card. So, you really want to be blue and green to be maximizing this card. Um, in the blue-green deck, it's going to be good. I actually really like the way that they costed this card. I think they did it exactly correct. Ral Crackling Wit. Two blue-red for a four-loyalty planeswalker. You cast a non-creature spell, put up a loyalty counter on it. Plus one, create a blue 1-1 one, one red otter with prowess. Um... Minus three, draw three cards, discard two cards, and then minus ten, draw three cards, you get an emblem with instant sorcery spells, you cast out Storm. I think I want to move this down, actually, because, like, four mana, four loyalty, make a one one. Just doesn't do it for me. And then draw three, discard two is not good either. Obviously, the ability of casting a non creature, putting a loyalty counter on it, is strong. Um,. And the ultimate's good. So, like, I, I maybe I'll just leave it here. It's a cool build around. It's fun. Like, if you just go four mana, like, if, you, if there's a reasonable, like, if there's a reasonable boarded state where, like, it's not a disaster, and you play this for four mana, plus up to five, next turn you cast two instants and sorcery spells, you go up to six, go up to seven. Like, you could ultimate in, like, two turns with this. Like, conce like you could conceivably do that. And because it's fun, I'm going to leave it here, but I have some skeptic because I don't think this is going to win that much because you really do have to build around it. Like, this is, like, it's a powerful card. Um, giving all your instants and sorceries Storm is good. I don't know if I need to say that or not. Uh, Storm, good mechanic. But, uh, yeah. Like, you just if, if you get this to 10, you probably win the game. I think that is something that you can do. I just don't, like, it. the, prob the, the problems with this card are it doesn't really catch you up and it doesn't interact with your opponent's board at all. So... That is a uh, that is a that is a big concern. That is a, a rather large concern. Seed Glaive Mentor, one red white for a three two with vigilance and haste, and it has valiant. Whenever it becomes the target of a spell or ability you control for the first time, you turn put a plus one plus one counter on it. So obviously, three mana three two vigilance haste. How good is that by itself? Probably, probably like tier three. You know, two toughness is a lot less than three toughness, so if it was three toughness, it would be tier two by itself, but it's not. Um, 
this is just a really strong thing to be targeting over and over again. So red white, I think, is going to be a good archetype. I think this is going to be a good card in that archetype. Seed Pod Squire. Three and a blue white hybrid for a 3 3 flying when it attacks. Target creature you control without flying gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. I'm on to wizards here. I know. I know. There's only one double. There's only one hybrid mana cost in this card. You know what that means? It sucks. <laughs> That's what it means. That is what that means. Um, yeah. So, not sneaky with this one. This is going to be bad. The the thing is, like, it's just, it, like, four mana three three flying. Everybody, like, it's not good. It's not good anymore. It it just isn't. And um, people will tell you it's good. They're wrong. It, this is just not. This just doesn't do enough. Star Seeder Mentor, three black white for a three five or five, yeah three five flying vigilance. The beginning of your end step, if you gained or lost life this turn, target opponent loses three life unless they sacrifice an online permanent or discard a card. So, that is a powerful ability, and this is a large creature with flying and vigilance for five mana. Um, the problem is it does give your opponent a lot of choice. They can lose three life. They can. Sacrifice like they can do whatever these options is the least bad for them, which is bad. I like this is the like the Crokes of text or whatever. I'm not a big fan of the Crokes of text, uh, because if your opponent is good, they will just have the least bad thing happen to them, which is not really what you want as the like whatever. Things in this card's favor are we talked about the common that can attack and gain life. So that's a that's a card that like helps this card out significantly because it allows it to trigger on the turn you play it. Very good. That's very important with this card, is to have things that are triggered on the turn you play it, because if you don't trigger it the turn you play it, it's pretty bad. This card has a problem that I talk about a lot in my set reviews, and with Signpost Uncommon specifically. If the Signpost Uncommon is expensive, generally it is problematic for drafting, because when you are drafting, you want to prior there is an inherent tension between prioritizing expensive cards and prioritizing cards that are uniquely powerful for your archetype. When the signpost on common is the best card in your deck and it's a two drop, it's very easy to just take it over everything else. This card, because it is a five drop, that is not the case. You often you will find yourself in many cases taking this card over a two drop that may be better for your curve and better for your deck in like in like an ideal sense. So like it puts added pressure on you to draft, to make other picks in your draft that make your deck a little bit worse. You know what I mean? So like that that type of tension is something that I always call out when, you know, I see a card like this that's, that's a five mana signpost because it just means that it's going to be inherently more difficult for these decks to be competing in the early turns because you are giving up picks to take a card that is good for your archetype, but that is, you know, inherently kind of like it, it, you're, it's it's a more expensive card, and more expensive cards come with a cost, which is that they better be powerful because if you're taking them early with early picks, it means that your deck is going to be fa falling behind more often early in the game, and that's not good. So uh, I'm kind of a noted five mana signpost hater. I kind of always rate them low because you know with few like there are some exceptions to this but generally speaking the, the more expensive signposts do not perform well and the cheaper signposts do it's, it's just kind of like how it goes like generally if your signpost isn't cheap it is harder for it to be good because of the reasons i talked about but um, i do think this is a powerful card and i think you can build your deck around this and it'll be good you're just kind of hoping to get it like pick six pick five you know you're not trying to take this pick two like you're just not i just don't think that's a good recipe for success i don't think you want to be doing that Stormcatch Mentor, blue-red for a 1-1 one -one with haste and prowess, instant and sorcery spells you cast, cost 1 less to cast. This has the exact opposite of the problem I was talking about. The thing is, with this card is, I don't think it's super powerful. It is a 2-mana 1-1 one -one haste prowess. That card's not very good, right? That's not a good card. Now, obviously, it reducing the cost of your instant and sorceries is very good in the blue-red spells deck, because a lot of your deck is made up of those cards, um, and so reducing their cost is very strong. Um, so that this is this is a card that in the deck that wants it is going to be very good. It has the, again, with what I just talked about with the 5-drop, this has the opposite thing, which is it's a 2-drop, which means you can take it over pretty much anything else in the archetype, and you're not going to be too, like, you're never going to be giving up too much equity by doing so. Like, if you're blue-red early, and you get into it for this card, your your curve is going to be in much better position than if you took the 5-drop early for black-white. So that's why I rated it higher. 
that, that's that's that that's kind of the difference between these two cards. Like it's a perfect example of kind of what I'm talking about. Where I don't think power level wise they're super disparate. Like I think that if you gave me a deck that was well built for either of them, um, it would be reasonable to say that it could they could be evenly powerful, right? Like if you have if you said to me before the draft you are going to have the right number of cards with each mana value in your deck, and you get to choose whether the like key card is this card or the black white card, I would be like kind of a toss-up right so this is kind of that's kind of it's kind of highlights what i'm talking about with the the, the high mana cost um signpost uncommon problem and a lot of times people like, get like surprised by this it's it's kind of like my it's a personal sort of thing for me like this is like something that i've noticed um again there are exceptions right like the um the red green card from for actually all be one Cinder Slash Ravager. Now, part of that is that that cost five mana when it was supposed to cost six. <laughs> sometimes that sometimes that card costs like four mana, um, because it worked with the oil counters and you could discount its price. So that was a, that was part of the reason it was good. But also, that one was an expensive card that got there. I'm trying to think of other ones that get there. Um, for specifically five mana, four mana doesn't have this problem nearly as much because you can play a lot of four drops and it's not as bad. But five mana is really the one where I start to have have issues. Hmm. I should I should actually go back and do this a study on this at some point. Back to the set review or a thing I'm actually doing. Tempest Angler next card one and two blue red hybrids for a two two. When you cast it on, can you just spell put a plus one plus one counter on it? So it's spell gorge or weird. Um, sure. I don't know. It really looks like a three mana two two to me. I'm just I'm gonna be completely honest. Like, if if we're like a you know if we're trusting each other with our feelings, this card looks like a three mana two two to me. And I, I just think spell gorge or weird isn't a good card in limited anymore, guys. Like I just I don't think it's good. And it it has a pro it has the problem of like this is a card that does not make your non creature spells any more favorable to cast really, and it is a non creature it has a creature spell in your deck that wants a lot of non creatures. So I don't think you want to prioritize this. The Blessed Blue Red decks probably aren't going to play it. You can play it in Blue Red, and it's not a disaster, but I don't think you should be prioritizing it highly. The Infamous Cruel Claw. One black red for a 3 3 menace. When it deals combat damage to a player, exile cards from the top of your library into exile a non land card. You may cast that card by discarding a card rather than paying its mana cost. So. A little bit unclear. I do think that this works in the way that you have to cast the card immediately. I think that looks to me like the way that you have to do this, so you have to make the choice immediately. Um, if you don't have to, obviously it gets a lot better, but I think that you do. 3 minute 3 3 Menace, again, I kind of talked about this earlier, is at the top end of Tier 3 and close to Tier 2 by itself. The fact that sometimes you just get to cast your 4 mana, 4 drop for 0 mana, and discarding a card is probably going to win you the game sometimes. Other times, you're going to just miss um, and hit, like, a 2-drop, and you discard your card to cast a 2-drop, and it's like, yeah, you saved 2 mana, but, like, did that actually... Was that actually good? That's the that's the modal... That's the most common outcome. But um, some games, this is going to be unbeatable, and some games, it's going to be just, like, kind of mid. So, yeah. It's it's going to be fine. It's going to be decent, but I don't think busted or anything. Tide Caller Mentor. One blue black for a 3 3 menace. When it enters, if there are seven or more cards in your graveyard, return up to one target non land permanent to its owner's hand. So, testing my theory of whether or not a 3 3 menace is actually good enough. Now, part of the problem is that blue black is not an aggressive archetype in this set. Like, it just isn't. So, this card is in a weird space where it is a powerful card in the sense that when it is on, it's very good. And you don't really want to be bouncing stuff on turn three anyway. So, that, that's fine. Um. And I've said that Threshold is enableable, and I do think that's true, but I just think that this, like, is not a re prerequisite to draft blue-black. And I'm not even sure there is a reason to draft blue-black. Veteran Guard Mouse. Three and a red-white hybrid for a 3-4 with Valiant. When it becomes the target of a spell or ability you control for the first time each turn, it gets plus one, plus zero, and gains first strike until end of turn, and you scry one. <sighs> so... 4 mana 3 4, not very good. Obviously, it attacks as a 4 4, a high percentage of the time. Fine. There's better things you can target to get Valiant triggers out of than this, which makes me not really want it. It is a 4 drop, so it is low priority in your aggressive deck, which red white is. 
So I think you can play this card. It's not a high priority. You should be trying to wheel this card if you're putting it in your deck. And even then, it may not. I think the best right away decks aren't going to play this, basically. Vine, Reap, Mentor. Green, black, for a 3-2. When it enters or dies, create a food token. This card's a banger. I mean... Uh, all the all like the best green cards forage right like all of like i was just I, like green video i was just gushing i was saying oh my god all of these cards that say forage on them are absolutely busted all you want to do is just have any reasonable two or three mana card that makes a food token and you're just going to be winning and this card makes two food tokens i, I mean and is a three two for two like this card is just absolutely busted i i mean maybe busted is like the wrong word i, I mean this card's just really doing everything you want to do. Like, this card makes me really believe in, in green black. Like, this card is... Um, just turning on all your forage stuff is is so good. And it does it for two mana, and it does it at no cost. And your opponent... Like, what is your opponent going to do? Not block it and take three every turn? And, like, like this is going to trade with something. Like, it's just going to trade with something. And then when it does, you get another food token. Like, this card's just really good. This card's just really, really good. And, um... Likely... I, I, I mean, my favorite two... Like, if I, if I think green is probably green and white are competing for best color, you know, could 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 we see black green be the best deck early? Totally could see that. Vren the Restless, the Relentless. He's not restless. He's relentless. Very different. Two blue black for a three four with word two. If a creature an opponent controls would die, exile it instead. At the beginning of each end step, create X one one black rat creature tokens. With this creature gets plus one plus one for each other rat you control, where X is the number of creatures your opponent's controls that were exiled this turn. So, 4 mana 3, 4, not very good. But, it has a ward 2, so that's something. And, if it if you untap with it, and you kill an opponent's creature, you get a 2-2 two, two rat. That's pretty good. Um, it kind of makes me th think of, like, Namada. You know, Namada from DMU. Um, exiling your opponent's stuff is, like, kind of more relevant than it appears. Now, in that format, it was actually even better than I think it's going to be in this format, because the format did, was a degenerate, like, it degenerated, devolved into just, like, who can get the most stuff out of their graveyard by the end of the format. That was kind of what was happening. This format, I don't think it's going to be like that, but um, I think this is going to be a good card. Um, it's just, you know, if you untap with it, it's an extremely big threat. Your opponent can't really attack into it. Like, your opponent, your opponent just can't afford to trade with your things ever, anymore. So, that is valuable. Wondertail Mentor. Green, red for a 2-2. Two, two. When you expand for it, put a plus one plus one counter on it, and you can add red or green. This is exactly what you want your mana dorks to do. Um, accelerate you early and become large threats in the mid to late game. So this is just great, right? So like it, it it really fits well, right? So expand four, turn two you play this, turn three, untap, spend four mana on your four drop. This is a three three, you have a four four in play. You're just you're off and running. You know, you're rolling, right? Um, and then the next turn you could attack with this, play another four get a 4-4, four, four. like, you could you have be attacking with a 4-4 four, four on turn 4 with this thing, and, and that's obviously, like, a best-case scenario, but it's also not so unfathomable, right? With the offspring mechanic, it's it's really reasonable to say. Like, it is actually, like, feasible to say, okay, well, actually, you're going to have enough things to spend 4 mana on on your turn to turn this on consistently, and it's a nice mana dork. Igra, Eater of All. Three black, green... For 6 6, ward sacrifice food. Other creatures are food artifacts in addition to their other types and have two tap sacrifice this permanent, you gain three life. Whenever a food is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put two plus one plus one counters on this. So, sneakily, the thing that's like sneaky about this card is it is just a vanilla 6 6. It is a five minute 6 6, which is good. It's a good. Don't, don't, you know, don't come, come to my house and attack me. You know what I mean? It's good. It's a good card. Like, five minute 6 6 is good. Um,. It turns all your opponent's stuff into foods, which they can use to sacrifice to pay the word cost, which... So it's like, word sacrifices creature, okay. Um, but if they just have another food, which, again, if the best deck is green-black, they might. Now, because the best deck is green-black, maybe this card is, you know, just better because it's in that archetype. It just, uh, it's just kind of a big, dumb creature. Like, it doesn't make your opponent's things... Like, it actually, it upgrades your opponent's creatures. It turns them into food. Or sometimes, your opponent's going to be like, oh... My 1-1 one, one that wasn't doing anything is now a food that I can use to, like, chump this and gain life. That's pretty good. And, uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of awkward. So, like, upgrading your opponent's creatures. Now, you're upgrading your creatures, too. 
But upgrading your opponent's creatures is, is never something that you necessarily want to do, and that's kind of why I have it in Tier 2 instead of Tier 1. And the last multicolored card, Zoroline at Cosmos Caller. One white black for a 3 3 with flying and vigilance. Whenever a bat you control attacks, you gain one life. Whenever it enters or attacks, you may pay black, white, and two life. And you do return target non land permanent with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield with the finality counter on it. So it's kind of like Shepherd of the Cosmos in some ways. Or it can be like that. Um, I mean, this is really strong, right? There, there are bats for two mana. None of them are, like, good, but. I don't know. They might be good if you have this in your deck. <laughs> like, I mean, whenever it attacks, you gain one, and it has vigilance, and it's a three-three flyer for three. And you can also just on turn five get something back, and you pay two life, obviously, which is a cost. But if you just get something back, like that's great, and you're getting great value. So, that's it. That's all the multicolored cards. Um, went on the over one and a half tangents about nothing, so that was good. Generally, that's kind of what we aim for here. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Hope you enjoyed the, the set review, the set reviewing. There were some technical difficulties with some of them this time, so hopefully that um, won't happen again, although I'm sure it will if I keep doing these for long enough. You know, you're going to make mistakes. But um, glad we sorted those out before uh, I recorded all my videos without my mic on, so that would have been good. That wouldn't have been great. Um, check out the other set review videos. See you next time.